Lesson 6, Coordinate Geometry. Hello everyone, my name is Dennis. This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out important updates from me. In this chapter, there are a few formula that you need to know. Formula number one, distance between two points. Let's say this is point A, the, the coordinate is x1, y1. This is point B, the coordinate is x2, y2. Now, I want to find the length of AB. So, this is x1 and this is x2. So this distance will be x2 minus x1. This is y1 and this is y2. This distance will be y2 minus y1. To find the length of AB, we can apply Pythagoras theorem, which will give us square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Do remember this formula. Formula number two, the midpoint of two points. So similar with the previous formula, let's say this is point A with x1, y1, and this is point B with the coordinate of x2, y2. So how to find the midpoint of AB, M? So this is the point M, and we let the coordinate of m as mx, my. So the distance between a m will be same as the distance between m b. So this is x1 and this is x2. This is mx. So this distance will be same as this distance as well. This is y1, this is y2 and this is my. This distance will be same as this distance. Therefore, the midpoint m, mx, my will be equals x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So remember this formula number 2. Formula number 3, the gradient of a straight line. So again, this is point A with the coordinates of x1, y1. This is point B with the coordinates of x2, y2. So to find the gradient of AB, M, the basic concept is rise over run. So this is x1 and this is x2. This is y1 and this is y2. This is the rise which equals y2 minus y1 and this is the run which is equal x2 minus x1 therefore the gradient m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so please remember this formula we can also measure the angle here as theta and therefore the gradient m equals tangent theta. The angle theta can also be measured here with the reference of the x-axis. Now, let's discuss several cases of the gradient and what it means. The first case, when the m is greater than 0, the graph is an is an increasing function. So to illustrate it, this is the x and y axis and this is the line with the angle theta. We can see that the theta is between 0 to 90 degrees and the graph is an increasing function. Second case, when the m is less than 0 or the m is negative, it means the graph is a decreasing function. So this is how we illustrate the case where you can see that the graph is a decreasing function. 
this is the angle theta and we can see that the angle theta is between 90 degrees to 180 degrees the third case when the gradient is equal to zero it means the graph is a horizontal line so this is how it looks like when m is zero and we can see that the angle theta is equal to zero degrees fourth case when the gradient m is infinity the graph is a vertical line so this is how it looks like when the graph is a vertical line and we can see that the angle theta is equal to 90 degrees formula number four collinear points so if we have point a with the coordinates of x1 y1 point b with the coordinates of x2 y2 point c with the coordinates of x3 y3 if the point a with the coordinates of x1 y1 point b with the coordinates of x2 y2 and point c with the coordinates of x3 y3 are collinear then this is how it looks like we can see that all these three points lie on a straight line if this is the case then the gradient of ab equals the gradient of bc equals the gradient of ac so remember this concept formula number five parallel lines if two lines l1 and l2 have the gradients m1 and m2 respectively and l1 is parallel to l2 then this is how it looks like this is L1 and this is L2. These two lines are parallel to each other. If this is the case, then the gradient M1 equals the gradient M2. Formula number 6. Perpendicular lines. If two lines, L1 and L2, have the gradients of M1 and M2 respectively, and L1 is perpendicular to L2, then this is how it looks like this is line l1 and this is line l2 so m1 times m2 will be equals to negative 1 formula number 7 equation of a straight line if a straight line l1 has a gradient of m and y in the set of c this is how it looks like this is the straight line L1 with the gradient M and the y-intercept of C the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus C or you can also use this formula y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 I would suggest you to use the second formula because it is much easier to use formula number 8 area of a polygon if point a with the coordinates of x1 y1 point b with the coordinates of x2 y2 point c with the coordinates of x3 y3 and so on to the last point point n with the coordinates of xn yn form a polygon this is how it looks like point a x1 y1 point b x2 y2 point c x3 y3 and so on to the last point point n with the coordinates of xn yn if this is the case to find the area of the polygon we can use the shoelace method which equals half then we write the first coordinate let's say we choose point a x1 y1 then we follow the anti-clockwise direction to the next point which is point B and the coordinate is x2, y2 the next point coordinate C, point C with the coordinates of x3, y3 and so on to the last point, point number n xn, yn and repeat the first point which is point A with the coordinates of x1, y1 so we need to repeat the starting point here 
to end this uh, pattern then we just can calculate as half then x1 times if y2 plus with x2 y3 plus and we continue to the last one will be xn y1 then we change to this direction and it becomes minus x2 y1 minus x3 y2 and we continue to the last point last point y uh, minus x1 y1 formula number nine ratio theorem if point p divides the line a b internally in the ratio of m to n to illustrate this is point a with the coordinates of x1 y1 this is point b with the coordinates of x2 y2 and this is point p let's say this is m to n ratio therefore the coordinates of p p will be equals m times if the coordinates of b and n times if the coordinates of a which means the coordinates of p equals n x1 plus m x2 over m plus n n y1 plus m y2 over m plus n please remember this formula so we have discussed several important formula and now is the time for us to discuss several examples and how to apply those formula the first example here finding the equation of a perpendicular bisector here is the question find the equation of the perpendicular bisector ab where point a coordinates is 4 8 and coordinates of b is 6 4 to illustrate here is how it looks like this is point a coordinates is 4 8 and this is point b coordinates of 6 4 you can draw a straight line to join these two points and we this is the middle po middle point point m so the perpendicular bisector will pass through the middle point and it is perpendicular to the line ab so the first thing we need to do is find the coordinates of the midpoint m for this case the midpoint m is equal 4 plus 6 over 2 8 plus 4 over 2 which give us the coordinates of 5 and 6 now the next thing we need to do is to find the gradient of AB M1 which equals 4 minus 8 over 6 minus 4 and it gives us negative 2 now we want to find the gradient of perpendicular bisector and do you still remember right if two lines are perpendicular to each other the gradients m1 times m2 will be equals to negative 1 so for this case i want to find m2 which will give us half so the equation of the perpendicular bisector will be we use this formula y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 do you still remember this formula as i I recommend you to use this because it is much easier so once you write down this formula the next step you need to do is just substitute the values so the y1 and the x1 is the coordinates of the midpoint y1 will be equal 6 and x1 will be equal 5 the gradient is the gradient of the perpendicular bisector for this case is half so once you substitute all the values into the formula then we will make y the subject and we get y equals half x plus 7 over 2 this is the answer now you can try this similar example yourself given that the coordinates of point a and b are 
negative 3, 2, and 5, 12, respectively. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. You can pause the video and try to do it yourself. Okay, here is the solution. So to illustrate this case, this is point A with the coordinates of negative 3, 2. This is point B with the coordinates of 5, 12. And we can draw a straight line to join these two points. So first, uh, this is point M, the middle point. And the perpendicular bisector will pass through the midpoint and it is perpendicular to line AB. So first, we want to find the coordinates of the midpoint M. For this case, it will be equals to 5 plus negative 3 over 2, 12 plus 2 over 2. And it gives us 1, 7. Next, I want to find the gradient of AB, M1, which for this case is equal 12 minus 2 over 5 minus negative 3. And we get the answer is 5 over 4. So, we want to find the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. We we'll apply this formula, m1 times m2 equals to negative 1, m2 will be equals negative 4 over 5. Hence, now we can form the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Again, we we'll apply this formula, y minus y1 equals m, x minus x1, with the x1 and the y1 is the coordinates of the midpoint. For this case, is uh, x1 is 1, y1 is 7. And the gradient is the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. For this case, it is m2 equals negative 4 over 5. So now we substitute the values into the formula and make y the subject. We'll get the answer is y equals negative 4 over 5x plus 39 over 5. This is the answer. Do you get the answer correctly? Okay, so if you don't like the answer in fraction, you can multiply 5 for both sides and you get 5y equals negative 4x plus 39. Okay, sometimes you also can write the answer as 4x plus 5y equals to 39. Now, let's discuss a very popular question related to finding the vertex of a parallelogram. Recall all the properties of parallelogram. So this is the parallelogram A, B, C, D. Property number one: opposite sides are parallel to each other. In other words, AB is parallel to DC, and AD is parallel to BC. Property number two: opposite sides have equal length. So for this case, AB will be equal to DC. AD equals BC. Property number 3. Diagonals intersect at point M, which is the midpoint of opposite vertices. So this is the first diagonal BD, and this is the second diagonal AC, and they intersect at point M. This point M is the midpoint of AC and BD. Property number 4. If all sides are equal length, or it is a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So for this case, if ABCD is a rhombus, then AC is perpendicular to BD. So please remember these properties of parallelogram. Now let's look at this example related to finding the vertex of a parallelogram. A triangle has vertices A, coordinates 4, 0, B, with the coordinates of 10, 4, and C, of the coordinates 9, 0. Given that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, find the coordinates of point D and the area of the parallelogram A, B, C, D. So to illustrate, here is how it looks like. This is point A, coordinates 4, 0. And this is point C, coordinates 9, 0. And this is point D, coordinates is 10, 4. So we join them together to form the triangle. 
therefore we can determine the point D which is here and we label the coordinates as AB. So here is the solution to find the coordinates of point D. First we want to uh, find that the midpoint of BD is equal to the midpoint of AC. So the find the midpoint of BD it is 10 plus A over 2 4 plus B over 2 and the midpoint of AC will be 4 plus 9 over 2 and 0. Then we compare 10 plus A over 2 equals 4 plus 9 over 2. So we solve this equation and the A is equal 3. Next, 4 plus b over 2 equals to 0. We solve this equation and we get b equals negative 4. Therefore, the coordinates of d is 3, negative 4. Solution for number 2, the area of the program B, a, b, c, d. Now, we already know the coordinates of d is 3, negative 4. Then, we can find the area of a, b, c, d using the shoelace method. So now let's choose point A as the starting point. The coordinates is for zero. Then we go with the anti-clockwise direction. The next point will be point D. Coordinates is three negative four. Next point C coordinates is nine zero. Followed by point D. The coordinates is ten four. And don't forget to repeat the starting point, which is point A for this case coordinates 4 0 then we close this pattern next we want to calculate the value so if it's equal half times now 4 times negative 4 plus 3 times 0 plus 9 times 4 plus 10 times 0 then we change the direction now it is minus 0 times 3 minus negative 4 times 9 minus 0 times 10 and minus 4 times 4 so now we want to calculate the values inside here which give us negative 16 plus 0 plus 36 plus 0 minus 0 plus 36 minus 0 minus 16 and the answer is 20 units squared Okay, now you can try this example yourself. So PQRS is a program whose diagonals bisect, at, by, bisect each other at M. The coordinates of P and Q are 4, 1 and 8, 5 respectively. The equation of the straight line QS is 3Y minus X minus 7 equals 0 and PR is parallel to the line y equals 3x plus 2. Find the equation of PR, the coordinates of M, the coordinates of R and of S, the area of the parallelogram PQRS. You can pause the video and try to do it yourself. Okay, here is the solution. For the first one, it is given that PR is parallel to Y equals 3X plus 2. So, it means that the gradient of PR, M is equal 3. Now, we can form the equation of PR with this formula, Y minus Y1 equals M, X minus X1, where the x1 and y1 is the coordinates of p so the x1 is 4 and the y1 is 1 the gradient is 3 and we make y the subject we get the equation is y equals 3x minus 11 now we want to find the coordinates of m so we know that pr bisects with qs at m so the PR equation is y equals 3x minus 11 and the equation of QS is 3y minus x minus 7 equals to 0. 
So we can substitute the y equals 3x minus 11 into the equation, which will give us 3 times 3x minus 11 minus x minus 7 equal to 0. Then we can solve this equation to get the value of x, which is x equal to 5. So once we get x equal to 5, then we can find the value of y by substituting the x equal to 5 into the first equation. And it becomes y equals 3 times 5 minus 11. We get y equals to 4. Therefore, the coordinates of m is 5, 4. Okay, now we update the diagram. The midpoint M coordinates is 5, 4. And we can move on to solve the question number 3, the coordinates of R and of S. Okay, so now we let X as the coordinates as A, B. So M is the midpoint of QS. We can apply the midpoint formula, which gives us 5, 4 equals A plus 8 over 2, B plus 5 over 2. So now we compare 5 equals a plus 8 over 2. We solve this equation. The answer for a is equal to. Next, 4 equals to b plus 5 over 2. We solve this equation. The value of b is 3. Therefore, the coordinates of s is 2, 3. Now we let the coordinates of r as c, d. And again, we use the midpoint formula where m is the midpoint of pr. So it will be 5, 4 equals C plus 4 over 2, D plus 1 over 2. Then we compare, 5 equals C plus 4 over 2. We solve this equation and we get C equals to 6. Right next, we uh, equal uh, 4 equals D plus 1 over 2. We solve this equation, the D is equal to 7. Therefore, the coordinates of R equals 6, 7. Okay, now again we update the diagram. Then we we have all the coordinates of the vertexes P, Q, R, S. So we can now find the area of the parallelogram P, Q, R, S by applying the shoelace method. So the starting point, let's choose point S. The coordinates is 2, 3. Okay, anticlockwise direction, the next point will be point P. Coordinates is 4, 1, followed by point Q. Coordinates is 8, 5, followed by point R, 6, 7, and we repeat the starting point, point S, 2, 3. Then use uh, the shoelace method, right? So 2 times 1 plus 4 times 5 plus 8 times 7 plus 6 times 3. Then we change direction, minus 3 times 4, minus 1 times 8, minus 5 times 6, minus 7 times 2. Then we calculate the values inside this bracket and the answer is 16 units squared. Finding the coordinates of an unknown collinear point. So let's look at the example with this diagram. So the diagram shows a triangle ABC in which point A is the point coordinates negative 2, 4. The side AB cuts the y axis at point P with coordinates 0, 2. The point Q, 4, 1, is on the side a, BC and the line AQ is perpendicular to BC. Find the equation of BC, the coordinates of B. Given further that Q divides BC internally in the ratio 1, to 3, find the coordinates of C and the area of triangle ABC. Okay, now let's uh, look at the solution for question number 1, the equation of BC. First, we want to find the gradient of AQ. So we apply the formula, right? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 over X1. So the gradient for AQ, M, uh, which is M1, equals 4 minus 1 over negative 2 minus 4, and we get negative half. And it is given that BC is perpendicular to AQ. Therefore, the gradient of BC, we can apply this formula, M1 times M2 equals negative 1. So the gradient of BC, which is M2, equals 2. So we can use... Uh, 
m the gradient is 2 and we use the coordinates of q as 4 1 apply into this formula 1 minus y1 y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to find the equation of bc so substitute the value y1 as 1 m as 2 and x1 as uh, 4 so and then we make y the subject the equation of the bc will be y equals 2x minus 7 next to find the coordinates of b right we use the first equation y equals 2x minus 7 and we want to find the equation of ab so firstly we want to find the gradient of ab which is uh, 4 minus 2 over negative 2 minus 0 we are using the point a p to find the gradient so the gradient will be equals negative 1 then we use m equals negative 1 and the coordinates of p 0 2 we can find the equation of ab uh, by applying use this formula y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 so substitute the values y1 as 2 the gradient is negative 1 the x1 is 0 and we make y the subject so the equation of ab will be y equals negative x plus 2 right so this is the second equation okay so point b intersects at the first line y equals 2x minus 7 and the line ab which is y equals negative x plus 2 so we solve simultaneous equation by equating the first equation with the second equation which gives us 2x minus 7 equals negative x plus 2 we solve this equation we get the x equals 3 then we find the value of y by substituting x equals negative x equals 3 into the second equation we get y equals negative 3 2 and the value of y is negative 1 therefore the coordinates of point b is 3 negative 1 so the next condition right the coordinates of c we know that q divides bc in the ratio of 1 to 3 so update the diagram so this is 1 and this is 3 so we let c coordinates as a b and apply ratio theorem since they give us a ratio so the formula uh, will be for 1 equals a plus 3 times 3 over 1 plus 3 b plus 3 times negative 1 over 1 plus 3 then we compare 4 equals a plus 3 times 3 over 1 plus 3 we solve this equation and we get the value of a equals 7 they compare 1 equals b plus 3 times negative 1 over 1 plus 3 we solve this equation and we get the b is 7 therefore the coordinates of c is 7 7 so lastly to find the area of triangle abc again we can use the shoelace method and we update all the points a b c and we choose the starting point which is a the coordinates of a is negative 2 4 then follow anti-clockwise direction the next point will be point b coordinates is 3 negative 1 followed by point c 7 7 and repeat the starting point point a coordinates is negative 2 4 now we have we want to multiply the values right so it becomes half okay then times negative 2 times the negative 1 plus 3 times 7 plus 7 times 4 then we change the direction minus 4 times 3 minus negative 1 times 7 minus 7 times negative 2 so we find the values inside and we get the answer of the area is equal 30 unit squares okay now you can try this similar example yourself given this diagram and the question is the diagram shows a kite OA BC whose diagonals meet at M given that point A 7A point B 5 3 and point C K K plus 3 
where a and k are constant. Find the coordinates of m, the equation of ac, the value of a and of k, the area of kite OABC, and the ratio AC to MC. You can pause the video and try to do it yourself. Okay, here the solution. The first question, the coordinates of M. So we know that M is the midpoint of O and B, where O is the origin. So the M will be equals 0 plus 5 over 2 and 0 plus 3 over 2. The coordinates of M will be 5 over 2, 3 over 2. So update the diagram. M is 5 over 2, 3 over 2. And we move on to solve question number 2, the equation of AC. Okay, so first we want to find the gradient OB, which is M1 equals 3 minus 0 over 5 minus 0, but using the coordinates of O and B. And the gradient of M1 equals 3 over 5. And we know that line AC is perpendicular to line OB. Therefore, M1 times M2 equals to negative 1. The gradient of AC will be M2 equals negative 5 over 3. Alright, we can use the gradient M equals negative 5 over 3 and the coordinates of the midpoint M, 5, two, uh, 5 over 2, 3 over 2. Okay, to find the equation of AC, apply this formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Substitute the values inside, y minus 3 over 2 equals negative 5 over 3, x minus 5 over 2. We make y the subject for this equation, and we get y equals to negative 5 over 3x plus 17 over 3. Or, multiply 3 for both sides to eliminate the fraction. It becomes 3y equals negative 5x plus 17. Now we want to find the value of a and of k. So we use the first equation, 3y equals negative 5x plus 17. So then the coordinates of a is 7a. So we substitute the values, the x as 7, the y as a. The equation becomes 3a equals negative 5, 7, plus 17. So, to, and solve this equation, the value of a is negative 6. Next, the coordinates of c is k, k plus 3. So we use the same equation, right? Uh, 3y equals to negative 5x plus 17. Substitute the y is k plus 3, and the x as k. And then we solve this equation we get k equals to 1. Next, find the area of the kite OABC. So we already know all the coordinates of the vertex for this kite. So we choose a starting point. Let's choose the point O as a starting point. So 0, 0. Then anticlockwise direction. The next point will be point A. The coordinates is 7, negative 6. Followed by point B, 5, 3. Then point C, 1, 4, and repeat the starting point, origin 0, 0. Then we calculate the values inside, right, which is equals half times right, 0 plus 7 times 3 plus 5 times 4 plus 0. Then we change the direction, minus 0, minus 36 times 5, minus 3 times 1, minus 0. So we calculate the values and we get the uh, the answer is 34 units square. Lastly, we find the ratio of AC to MC. So we use these three points, point C, 1, 4, point M, 5 over 2, 3 over 2, and point A, 7, negative 6. We let CM to MA as M and N. So update on the diagram, M to N. We apply the ratio theorem, which should be, be m equals mx1 plus mx2 over m plus n, and y1 plus my2 over m plus n. So we, uh, 
we will apply the values for m coordinates is 5 over 2, 3 over 2 equals n times 1 plus m times 7 over m plus n, n times 4 plus m times negative 6 over m plus n. Then we compare. So m equals, uh, 5 equals n plus 7m. So n will be equals 5 minus 7m. So this is the first equation. Next, 3 equals 4n minus 6m. This is the second equation. We substitute the first equation into the second equation. We get 3 equals 4 times 5 minus 7m minus 6m. We solve this equation. We get m equals to half. So n will be equals 5 minus 7 times half. And the n value will be 3 over 2. So therefore, the ratio of m to n is equal half to 3 over 2 or equals 1 to 3. Therefore, AC to MC will be equals to 4, 4 to 1. Do you get all the answers correctly? Alright, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any questions or thoughts to share? Feel free to write it down in the comment. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.